both both in stuff and performance early this season. Just what do you think Micah has has done well to to connect to connect connect with some of the guys and, and get some of the strides that we've seen out of them? He knows that guys need to pitch differently based on their stuff and capabilities. The the technology and the upgrading in the cage and the lab has helped. Rob has been a big part of that with his analysis of coming through the TrackMan data in the lab and in the games to help these guys move along and to make sure we're not giving things away with how we're throwing these pitches and then trying to develop the shape and the break of the breaking balls and the feel and the deception of the changeup. It's been just a nice progression for the guys. I think the strength training, what Jamie does, what Phil does with the arm care and the prehab and the rehab, the nutritionist, all of that is what the program is offering and the guys are taking advantage of it. It's been, it's been fun to watch. Link, we've we've seen Clemson have, I guess, similar level of of success earlier this season. Obviously, this a uh, a real ramp up in terms of the level of competition. I guess, what have you seen from from that team? The how what's allowed them to get off to a strong start? I haven't gotten to Clemson yet, so we'll we'll dive into that this afternoon, tonight, and all day tomorrow. They're clearly one of the best teams in the country. So I I have not gotten to that. Our energy was on getting through the weekend and trying to figure out a way to manage the Stetson game. So our attention is now turning to that. And, you know, we have we have all day, all night, and you know, seven and a half, eight hours on the bus to continue to dive into it. And then we'll see what Friday brings with the night game and the weather and all the things we face. And they're one of the best teams in the country. To say I've followed along everything they've done with what we're trying to manage here, I, I just take one thing at a time, and we'll dive into that, you know, starting – the end of this call and got some recruiting things this afternoon. We've got to get out to some high school games and stay in tune with what's going on locally, regionally, nationally. So that's on the plate too, but they're clearly one of the best teams in the country, very offensive, good personality. Like they, they have variety. They can run, they use the short game. They have some power. They're a good offensive team, no doubt, like one of the best in the country. So we'll dive in a little deeper here in the next 48 hours. We we got to see the the team handle a road environment at Florida, but just how intrigued are you to see them handle it again and, and going into you know obviously three games instead of just one? Yeah, I've been there a lot, played there a lot um, through the last twenty years, and it's a great environment. The fans um, are right on you. They've done some really nice things to the facility with their player development building, their cages, practicing field and stuff. It's a neat it's a neat place. And they're they're on it, and those fans have loved it for decades. They're they're very vocal, um, and our guys just need to stay focused on the task at hand and not get wrapped up in what's going on outside of the white lines. You know, we've played in loud environments, and we try to build this where the verbal interaction is minimal with what we need to say to the guys on the field in terms of coaching. Like we do a lot of things with our number systems and our touches and whatnot. So hopefully, you know, as good as their crowd is and as loud as they are and as in their faces, as in our faces as they are, we can, we can just continue to kind of go about our business and, and focus on the things that ultimately decide the games and limit the distractions from the outside. And our guys have seemed to handle that okay. Link, I guess what kind of what kind of relationship do you have with Coach Backage? I know he was kind of hired the the other big hire in the same uh, cycle as you two years ago, and I guess uh, what have you seen? It seems like he's had some pretty immediate instant success taken over there. Well, I've I've known him. You go back to the recruiting days when you're when you're coming along. And there's a lot of time on the road that you spend, and he's a very good recruiter and a great tactician. Um, they have a talented team there, and that's going to continue. Michigan, you know, we squared off Michigan. They were in our regional, as you, I'm sure you know that. And um, we played them a couple times. So um, that's that's the crux of our relationship is kind of growing up in the recruiting world as young coaches. And then you get your opportunities to move along and have some head coaching opportunities. And clearly they, they have great resources and capabilities at Clemson to build a great program, as do we at Florida State. So they're on pace. They're one of the best teams in the country. He took over a, a talented group, 
and he's done a nice job with it. And they've continued to add through their recruiting. And there's a huge percentage of this that is roster management, draft projection and handling the draft and onboarding players and the transfers and the variety of people that you can bring in. That's a huge piece of this. And then you have to coach the game and develop the players. And clearly they've done a really nice job of that as well. Well Well-rounded program. He's a very talented, complete coach. Does a good job. Diamas doesn't look to be playing this weekend. Max has been on and off. He has some at-bats that are pretty exciting. He's got tremendous, tremendous power, probably as much power as anybody we have. Consistency with approach and pitch selection has been the thing that I think he's he's fighting a little bit. His jumps in the outfield have been great. He runs the bases very well. He knows what he's doing. He's a rangy outfielder. He's got a good arm. It's just settling and consistency of the at-bat is all. And we have other guys. Jordan Williams um, is a switch hitter, a talented player that brings some energy. You've seen how much we've tried to get him into these games in various roles to run the bases, to provide some energy. So Jordan Jordan is in play as well. Max has, has battled. He's had some big at-bats for us. He's let off some games and kind of gotten us going. But clearly the fluctuation of the quality of the at-bat is something he's got to continue to to hone in on. Sometimes I think he's pressing and trying to do a little bit too much, but he works at it. He's an intelligent baseball mind, and he'll figure it out. And Diamas, I, I don't see that factoring in this weekend. We try to create these high leverage situations in September and October and January and February leading in to try to prepare them for it. And most of your high school recruits and some of your junior college players coming in and some of your transfers have never been bullpen leverage guys. They just haven't. So the acclimation to warming up down there behind the fence, not running around in the outfield, the sooner you can get them comfortable with that, the better off you are when they enter games under those conditions. The pitch execution has been good. There are moments where it clearly can be better. Some of the young guys have to learn, you know, from one outing to the next. It needs to be repetitive. It can't be, you know, one of every two outings we have our A stuff. It needs to be every time. And I feel like we've managed them fairly well. I don't think we've, ask anybody to do, you know, too much in terms of workload or bouncing back. Um, But it is an interesting balance that all coaches face when you're trying to teach young pitchers how to come into leverage situations or, for that matter, how to come in out of the bullpen in general. It's just different. So we build the program to try to teach those guys what it's like to be in those roles. And everybody we have has entered the game in some form or fashion in practice in a bullpen situation. Even all our starters do that. So it's a big point of emphasis. And you you understand that most of your games are decided once that starting pitcher is out of the game. Some are not, but a lot of them are. So that piece of the game is so impactful in the management of who's available and what the matchup is you're bringing them into is also a strategic part of that. Link, we, uh, we we haven't seen Ben Barrett in a few weeks. I guess the book you speak to about his status uh, at the moment. He's coming back. Like he started his throwing program. So he'll, he'll be back. He'll be back soon. I, I don't see him factoring in this weekend, but, but he will be back. I know Brady didn't give you exactly what you wanted out of him last night, but but with him and Hudson and, and the fact they missed the fall and they're kind of still in the timeline of this kind of being fall for them, I guess, just how impressed have you been with how far along they are and, and the ability to, to miss bats that they've shown? Yeah, um, that's why they were recruited here, honestly. Like, they had good stuff. They're different. It's different stuff. Um, 
I think once we can land on the upside stuff showing up every day, then we'll start to really taste what they can do. Um, I think both of them have been pleasant surprises, especially coming off the injuries and and no real ramp up process in the fall to kind of get your feet wet in this. Um, but it's it hasn't been every time out that you see the A stuff. Yesterday, Lauk, it wasn't the A stuff. Now, why that is, I don't know. It was probably – he was probably more prepared going into yesterday than he was in some of the other bullpen appearances he's had, but yet the stuff wasn't quite what we had seen. Where Rowan, it was what we'd seen, but maybe Rowan's last outing, it wasn't what you saw yesterday or in his previous outing. So just the consistency – and the absorption of what it feels like in these moments and in these roles, whether it is starting like Lauk had yesterday or whether it is coming in in a leverage situation out of the bullpen, it's it's their development and understanding and comfort with what this is like to come in to face a lefty at a key time, to come in and face a righty, to come in with the bases empty, to come in with the bases jammed up. So growth has been good. They're still learning. They're still maturing. They're still figuring themselves out. And they're figuring the game out. But I am really pleased with how they've trended forward since they got back in January. Last time I went to Clemson, our pitching coach had to drive himself during the COVID thing. Something happened. He may have had COVID. I don't remember. We went down with no pitching coach. I ripped my calf muscle running out of the dugout when my right fielder crashed head first into the right field wall. I couldn't walk. Um, so we went into game one, no pitching coach, couldn't walk, um, kind of hobbled out to the mound when I needed to. So that's what I remember. That's what I remember my last trip to Clemson. I think we won the series. Good stuff. Good series. Funny stuff. Like you think about some of these moments and the last time you were there, what was what was going on? Um, to think back of first trips on the road, um, like every one of these road events is essentially feels like a super regional. You know, the trip to Gainesville, if that's going to be a super regional regional environment, this is going to be a super regional environment I, I don't I don't think much is going to change in what you face when you go you just know that the fan presence and the volume the level with which you have to function without being able to talk and yell like you could if you were out here practicing today that's probably the biggest the biggest thing clearly they're one of the best teams in the country so the talent and the stuff on the mound and the offensive capability speaks for itself. They're really a complete team. So you know you're going to have to deal with that. Um, and sometimes you – I go back, I think my first road trip, Notre Dame ACC was Wake Forest. The two guys I had groomed to be our relievers um, recorded a few outs and in the midst of an absolute, absolute firework display, like we kind of coughed up a game. When you build the whole thing to get these two relievers to the mound, and it matched up, and it didn't go well, and we lost the first game of a doubleheader and had to reboot and go back and play the night game. So sometimes you – the script and how you think this is going to look, it may not go that way. It doesn't mean you can't have success, but we talk about being open-minded and whatever part of the game presents itself. Like, are you prepared for that? And it may not be how you script this out. And I think when you get on the road – the things that happen in a different venue, different fans, you know, people not pulling for you. Everybody's kind of pulling against you and rooting against you when you're on the road. It just adds a different dimension to how this stuff feels. It doesn't mean you can't perform. You just have to adapt to what the game presents at the moment and take one thing at a time. And you have to be able to go to plan B and alter. And I think about some of those, the Clemson trip a couple of years ago, the Wake Forest trip a few years ago. Like those stand out to me as how unusual some of these things can be. 
I remember coming here with our Notre Dame team, and I think two of our starting pitchers recorded a combined four outs. Then you would never think that's going to happen, but it it doesn't mean that you can't be successful. Sometimes things line up the way you hope, and it it stays on track a little bit. Sometimes that thing comes off the rails, and you have to be able to adapt and go to plan B. So I think when you go into, okay, this is a first road series, there are probably some things that will happen that are not on script. Some of those things happened yesterday in the game. So where it is and who you're playing probably doesn't matter as much to me to the ability of the guys to adjust and handle things that happen that are a little bit out of sorts and not in your home facility. That's it. And that's the focal point of everything we do. When you have to take that on the road, clearly they're just different environments and surroundings. All right, anything else from the media for Link? Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach.